Hey, what's happening? I'm back on the Manhattan Bridge. I said Brooklyn Bridge the other day. This is the Manhattan Bridge. This is the view from Brooklyn to Manhattan. Pretty cool, right? If you look right, what, right there, <laughs> there's a taxi cab right there. Anyway, let me pull this down so you can see the hero on my chest. So today is September 1st. This is the 63rd episode of the Be Your Own Hero Show. Hero is an acronym. It means helping everyone reaps optimism. In other words, giving to others is a reciprocal, reciprocal action. You get as you give. And also it is an extension of the Hero Ministry clothing line that I launched at the end of last year. It's a one-for-one -one brand, which means that you get one and you gift one at the same time you get a shirt or a hoodie or a sweatshirt for yourself that has the word hero on it and that enables me to donate a brand new shirt or hoodie or sweatshirt to the unhoused so brand new items for the unhoused that are not only brand new they're also wearable affirmations that will hopefully uplift their spirits so this show is an extension of that so disclaimer i am not a personal trainer or a financial advisor so Take what I say with a grain, of a grain of salt. These are things that have worked for me or oftentimes have not worked for me. And I'm hoping that you will benefit from my effort to become my own hero in your effort to become your own hero. All right, so all that said, shout out to New Thought Media Network for giving me the space and the opportunity to be here to talk about my journey of becoming my own hero. Check them out, ntmedia.org. You can donate. You can also check out the other shows on the network. Lots of positive programming, lots of uplifting stuff. You can tune into this news as opposed to the news, the six o'clock news, if you want to uplift your spirit. Okay, so I think that's all my introductory stuff. I think so. Check me out here, live Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern. Okay, so today is Wednesday. That means workout Wednesday, right? So I'm going to keep rocking with the same question that Olafemi and Nicole asked me before. What have you learned from your many days of running because today believe it or not is day 93 what 93 consecutive days of me running every single day since june 1st at least a mile or more at least a mile since june 1st like that that, that blew me away anyway i'm going to get into the numbers about that later because i tallied my numbers up oh, wait tomorrow's tally thursday and we might talk about it today because I'm a little hype. I'm a little hype about the numbers. But anyway, let me get back into uh, the, the general question. What have I learned from running? And I keep thinking of more and more things that I've learned. So I'm trying to distill it down. But the main thing, well, the main thing today, I may have something else to say next Wednesday. But the main thing today is you do not know what you're capable of. You do not know what you're capable of. And I apply that to me. So let me tell you a story. As usual, let me tell you a story. So if you've been following me, you know that I was traveling recently, right? So while I was traveling, I was using the Strava app, S-T-R-A-V-A, -A, the Strava app. And it, it keeps me busy. It's always suggesting something. So it was suggesting, well, maybe you should try a 5K. So I've done a 5K, but it's saying, you know, try one now on the app or soon on the app. So it's, you know, it, it let me sign up for a 5K by the end of the month. I was like, yeah, all right, let me let me sign up for that 5K. You know, work myself up to a 5K on vacation, right? I signed up for the 5K. Two seconds later, I get a notification. Like I'm putting the phone down, I pick it back up. What's the notification? Congratulations on completing your 5K. See, what the app did is it looked over my history through the month and saw that I'd already <laughs> run a 5K during the month of august so oh yeah there you go you're done yep you're done all chipper yay you're done what's next i was like all right all right you know what i'm saying because i was going to skate with a 5k because i've done a 5k i knew i could do another one the app is like no 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 you've done that already let's do something else let's do something more yay hmm. so i signed up for the 10k the 10k obviously is just double the distance so a a 5K is 3.1 miles. Emphasis on the point one. Because speaking for myself, once I get to three, I'm like, you know, I'm done. 
I'm done. You got to remember the point one because if you don't get the point one, it's not a 5K. Same thing for the 10K. It's 6.2. Remember that. It's going to come into play later. 6.2. All right. So I signed up for the 10K. I do not do a 10K while I'm traveling on the cable. I, it, that doesn't happen. <laughs> that doesn't happen. And so then a couple of days ago, I guess Monday, I realized, oh, no, tomorrow is the 31st. It's the end of the month. And the and the the challenge is for the month of August. I was like, all right, so I got to do a 10K now yesterday, the 31st, the last day of the month. I got to do a 10K. So I get up early. I get up at 5. I hit the road by 530. I'm out there jogging. Can't see. But I was going to say can't see dark, but it's New York. So all, you know, the city is flooded with light. So I could see everything. So I, I can't get away with saying can't see. It was bright. It was almost daylight bright. So I'm I'm jogging along 530. Uh, so I, I do my, so I planned a route, which I don't usually do, but I was, I was, want to make sure I got my 10K. So I planned a route. All right, so it's half a mile to West Side Highway. If I run up the West Side Highway till I get to about three and a half miles, I come back down. That should be a little over six miles. That should be right. So I did all that, ended my my run, did my little video, my my run report. You got to check out my run reports over on Facebook and Instagram. They're getting to be very popular. And by the way, I started those because of my mom, (laughs) because my mom likes to get a report after I do something. So I started those because of my mom, but they've become very popular. So check them out. Anyway, I do my little run report and I'm, you know, I'm swaggy with it. Like, yeah, I just did, you know, I did my little 10K, little something, something, something. I'm feeling good about it, right? And then I end my run report and I'm waiting for the ping that I got when I signed up for the 5K. They're like, congratulations, and, and nothing happened. So I was like, all right, well, maybe it's still calibrating. I'm gonna wait till I get home. I get home, I look again, still no ping, still no congratulations. So I'm like, let me look at this thing. Mm, I missed the point two. I missed the point two. My my run was 6.06. So 0.14, I missed 0.14. I was just shy of a 10K. So I spent some time being fussy with myself about that. I didn't check the app. I should have paid attention, blah, blah, blah. All the, all the negative self-talk, all the self-criticisms came right came right up, right? I'm beating myself up about it. And then, and I keep looking at the app, like, like something's going to change. I keep looking at it like, wait, 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 you know, carry the one? No, no, that's still, that's still not a 10K. So I keep looking at it. In the process of looking at it, I see all these other achievements it's giving me, right? And then I look at the time. I ran without stopping for one hour and nine minutes. What? What? Like, if you had asked me on Monday, like Monday, two days ago, if I could run continuously for an hour, I'd be like, oh, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, I can't can't do that. (laughs) I can't do that. If you'd asked me two days ago if I could run a 10K, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I've done a 10K before. That's not that challenging. I can do that. But if you would ask me if I could run for an hour, I'd be like, like no, that's that sounds impossible to me. Literally, it sounds impossible to me now as I'm talking about it. But I did it, though. I ran continuously without stopping, no walk breaks, for an hour and nine minutes. And I was busy being disappointed about the fact that it wasn't exactly a 10K. I missed the blessing of of having broken through another one of my belief boxes, broken out of another one of my belief boxes that I can't run for an hour. I mean, that that boggles my mind in this moment right now. So that brings me back to, you don't know what you're capable of and neither do I, and you can't trust your mind. You can't trust it. I'm sorry, you can't trust it because your mind is gonna keep feeding you excuses and self-limiting beliefs that it has learned through your own behavior over the course of years. Because look at look at the trickiness of that. If you'd asked me to run six miles, I'd be like, yeah, sure. I have now built up enough belief over these past months to know that I can do that. But if you'd asked me if I could run for an hour, I'd have said no, not realizing it's the same thing, that it takes about an hour, if you're running my pace, to run six miles. 
look at how the mind was trying to pull me back in that area. Like, all right, so he's gotten used to running miles now. We got to let him go there. We got to let him go on the six miles. But if someone asks him about an hour, let's let's hold him right there. Let's hold him. Fascinating and troubling. You can't trust your mind. You have to build the muscle of pushing past the self-limiting beliefs that automatically populate in your mind. Because most of the time, we don't even realize that they're self-limiting beliefs. We don't realize that we, we've put ourselves in a belief box. That's been my experience. And that has been, I think, the chief, one of the chief experiences of running every day for 93 days, recognizing that I don't know what I'm capable of, that I have to keep pushing what I think are my limits, and that I can't trust my mind. I can't trust my mind. I've got to push past, I've got to treat my mind like a hostile witness. Oh, I can't, I can't run for an hour? Okay, okay, all right, yeah, cool, cool. And then try anyway, you got to push back. And I'm sure that applies to you because that's the way the mind works. Now that I'm reading about neuroscience, it's just, it's just the way the mind works. It wants to keep you comfortable and secure. And if you want to get out of being comfortable and secure, you got to push for it. Okay. That's all I got to say about that. I invite you to do something. I invite you to get out there. I invite you to push against the walls of your own belief box. But you won't find the walls unless you try to do something. You got to get up. You got to do something. I'm talking to you. Don't pass the buck. I'm talking to you. Don't just be like, oh, Sekou's doing so much. You do something. You get up. You start moving. The body was designed to be in movement. Like, you know how you leave a car for a long time and you come back to it and things are, are wonky? They're not working right? That's because a car was designed to be in movement. Just like a plane. If you leave a plane for a long time, things are not gonna be right when you try to fly it again. You've gotta keep a plane in movement. Body, plane, car, same thing. They were all designed to be in movement. Move your body, get up, move your body. Today's Wednesday, do something. Workout Wednesday. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna do a little brief commercial break. I'm gonna come back and do the hero, no, hero news right after this. Maybe. Okay, so I'm over in the chat. Shout out to Gladys, shout out to Savone, shout out to Nan, shout out to Tim. Yes, the human body is an amazing instrument that is capable of anything. Yeah, but you got to believe it, though. You got to believe it. You got to get out of that belief box. All right, thanks for the thanks for the hearts, Jill. I appreciate it. I'll, yeah, I'll take that, Tim. I'll take that. I am excited about it. Okay, so Hero News. A couple things. I'm going to go ahead and give the miles up. I'm going to give it up. I can't wait till tomorrow because I'm too hype about it. So you already know I've been running 93 days in a row, which is already mind boggling. But I added up the numbers today. I have run over 234 miles. What? What? Like, I don't know. There's something about the 200 that really blows me away. I was thinking I was around 190. 234 miles so far. So I have adjusted the the pledge over on pledge. Actually, I'm not even gonna use that website anymore. Just go to my website and I'll put that up. It's just sacredrights.com. You go to my website and I, I created a link to my charity run uh, campaign from my website. It's right there on the homepage, you can't miss it. So I adjusted the campaign so that it will add up to exactly 500 miles. So from June 1st, to December 31st, my goal is to have run 500 miles, and I'm almost halfway, and to have raised $5,000. So that includes the miles I've run thus far and the money I've raised thus far. So thus far, I've run 234 miles and raised about $1,000. So my goal is to run the rest of 266 miles to get up to 500 miles and raise about $4,000. So that the overarching goal from June to December, oh, half a year. So the half year goal is 500 miles run, $5,000 raised. Okay. So all that said, shout out to the people that have donated so far. Shout out to Reverend Melissa. Shout out to my aunt, Auntie Dot in Nashville. And shout out to Simone. Simone, you got to change that email address. 
I'm not going to tell everybody what it is. You got to change that email address. We are manifesting greatness. I figured out who you were by the email address. So I was like, Beth Mel, isn't this Simone's email address? And she was like, yeah. I'm like, you need a better email address. You need a, a, one that, that manifests who you are, like, like a great giver or something. I'm not going to tell anybody what it is yet. But if you send me another email with that same email address, we'll put it out here on Front Street. Get you a get you a manifesting email. All right, Simone. Appreciate the donation, though. I appreciate it. Okay, so that's everyone who's donated so far. We're up to about six hundred dollars already on this new platform, and the four people who were MIA on the previous iteration have have decided to come over and donate on this platform. So that'll be happening soon. All right. So all that said, shout out, shout out to Regina Smithwick. Regina had me on her podcast recently. Let me take this down. Regina had me on her podcast recently and and she decided to buy a uh, uh, a hero shirt on her own. And then she posted it. This is this is her. That's Regina wearing the hero shirt, looking very cool. And I posted this. Zeta Phi Beta is a part of her name. Right. You see that Regina Smithwick, Zeta Phi Beta. So I posted this and, and Jacinta, the hero team ambassador in Louisville, Kentucky, reached out to Regina, unbeknownst to me, reached out to her to welcome her to the hero family, which, oh my God, it's a family. And also gave her a shout out because they're both members of the same sorority. So I love the fact that there's this life of the hero ministry that, that is operating beyond me. So I'm very excited about that. If you want to hear the podcast, you can check out Regina's podcast. And you can also check out mine because what I did is I downloaded her whole podcast and I put it into mine. So it's one of the most recent episodes of my podcast, which is the Sacred Rights Podcast. If you've been watching this, you know I have two. I have the Sacred Rights Podcast and Get Rich 101. Check both of those out on all the streaming platforms. Okay. Is that it? I think. Yeah, I think that's everything. So I am going to pop out of here. I will be producing Sit with Rev. Melissa at 1030 Eastern, 930 Central. And I may be popping in, popping in to say a few words. As you may know, she's in Martha's Vineyard. And I went to visit her, by the way, in Martha's Vineyard. And it's a very, very cool place. I haven't been to Martha's Vineyard since I was a kid. It's an island, so you have to take a ferry over there. You can't just drive up. Anyway, she's in Martha's Vineyard. And I'll be producing her show, Sit with Rev. Melissa, in a few minutes. So tune back in for that. And until then, keep doing, be a hero, be your own hero, and remember that now, right now, is better than perfect. Later.